Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is an older Honeywell Aquastat controller, and I'm going to show you how it works and then also how to troubleshoot it if you're having some problems. This one happens to be a uh, Type L8148E. So this is an Aquastat relay that will control uh, when the burner turns on and when the circulating pump turns on on a gas or oil boiler. So how it works is you have 120 volts here, you have L1, that's power, your 120 volt power, and then L2, that's your common. And on this relay right here, you have uh, connections that will connect uh, your L1 to your C1, and that's your circulating pump. Your L2 and C2 are actually connected, so if you took a resistance reading, you would actually have uh, 0.0 ohms of resistance there. Uh, on the other side of this relay right here, you are connecting 24 volts, all right? And that is actually coming over to here. And as long as the temperature setting over on the side here, there's a little dial right here. As long as the temperature uh, is set higher than what it actually is on the bulb, it's going to continue to put power across here and over to your burner on B1. So B1 would be your hot, 24 volt hot, and B2 will be your common, but only when your thermostat is calling over here. Uh, and what happens when your thermostat calls is this relay right here sucks down. I'm gonna show you how that works. So I'm gonna go ahead and power this. Your transformer right here, you have 120 volts coming in to your transformer. Uh, there is nothing, there's no switch in here that turns the uh, transformer off. That will be outside of this box. So you just have L1 going right over to the transformer and L2 right over to the transformer. 24 volts comes out on Z, then it goes over to W. And basically you have your thermostat connections typically on T and TV. So it comes from here to here and then over to your T, then from your T to your thermostat. And when your thermostat calls for heat, it connects back over to the TV. And when that happens, you're sending voltage to this relay to the coil on this relay and it sucks this down and it allows 24 volts over to here, comes across here and powers your burner. As well at the same time it's turning your circulating pump on with the other part right here, it's connecting here and it is uh, sending 120 volts from L1 over to C1 and it's powering your circulating pump. So to demonstrate that I'm just going to go ahead and uh, turn this on and I'm going to take my uh, DL479 and uh, go ahead and show you how that voltage is following. I'm also going to take out this little jumper here from Z to W just to show you the uh, 24 volt circuit. Basically, if you uh, had a, a low limit controller, uh, you would take this out right here and you'd be going to a, another smaller aquastat. And it would have a, a temperature sensor uh, just like this. It would be strapped onto the pipe and and basically you'd need to go through that switch in order to connect Z to W. So I'm turned on to volts AC, I turned my light on, and I'm now going to go ahead and test for 24 volts. So you actually have 24 volts between your, your Z and B2. So you see we're reading 25.61. So we don't have any voltage here, and we, we don't have any voltage here or here. Okay. Anytime you're trying to test anything with 24 volts inside the Aquastat control, you're going to put your probe on B2, which is, that's your common for your, for your relay right here. So you can see that, that since we don't have this jumped right now, our voltage is not making it over to our W. So I'm going to go ahead and put that jumper back. Now that I put my jumper back in place, I'm going to go ahead and test again from B2 right over to T. And you see that we have 25 volts. So it comes in here, 25 volts, it comes over to W, 25 volts, comes over to T, 25 volts. And then you see that you do not have any voltage over here on the TV. So that means that we need to jump from T to TV, and that would be what your normal thermostat connection would be. So now we'll go ahead and do that. Now that we have our first jumper in place, you see that anytime we touch here, our relay clicks. Okay? That would be the same thing that happens when you call for heat. So now I'm going to put this on permanently. And now we're calling. So we should have 120 volts on our circulating pump. From 
C1 to C2, and you see that we have 121 volts. As well, as long as our temperature setting on this is higher than what this is reading on the bulb, the temperature on the bulb, then we should have 24 volt power on the burner right here. You see we have 24.1 volts. The power comes in from this relay, 24 volts, over to this blue wire. It then enters into this uh, temperature controller and then it comes out this side, 24 volts, and then comes over to the B1. So I'll show you uh, how that works because I'll, what I'll do is I'll disconnect this one wire and we'll read 24 volts between here and here, but we won't read 24 volts between here and here. That means that we need this switch uh, to close in order for this burner to turn on. Basically, this is the safety device to make sure that the burner uh, does not continue to run and run and run and run. So we want to try to get this temperature of the water up to whatever we have, say like 180 degrees for uh, hot water baseboard or 160 degrees for cast iron radiators, whatever. So I just wanted to give you an up close image of the uh, thumb dial for the temperature control for your burner. This will be when your burner shuts off. All right, so if you have it set at 180 degrees, then once the water reaches 180 degrees on your sensor, you will no longer have 24 volts uh, on your burner because this switch will open up the electrical circuit. So now you see we are calling for heat and we're gonna put one probe on B2 and you're gonna see that we have 24 volts right now. We have all right, 23.6. From here to here, we should have nothing, right? We have nothing there. And then on our burner, we have nothing there either. Okay, so, so that means that you actually have to have this touching right down onto this screw, and then this switch needs to be closed in order to provide power over to your burners. Just so you know, this sensor right here is a short one, and it actually goes right inside of this well in order to sense what temperature the inside of the boiler water is. So this right here is sealed inside of your boiler, inside the water jacket, and it's sensing what temperature it is. You could have a long one of these and it could be uh, strapped onto a water pipe on your boiler. So some of the things that could go wrong with this relay is the transformer itself could go bad and you can verify that by just reading from Z to B2. See if you have 24 volts there. Another thing that could go bad and is more often bad than the transformer, it would be this relay right here. So either the coil could be bad on it or the contacts could be bad. You could have a uh, burnt connection on the circulator side or you could have a burnt connection on the 24 volt side. So there, there's two contacts on here. One's 120 volts, one 24 volts. It's actually sucked down like this by 24 volts. Anytime that you connect uh, your T to TV, as long as you have your W to Z connected, Anytime that your thermostat calls for heat, this is actually going to suck down. And sometimes those contacts are just uh, worn and they're not making uh, very good contact. So you could uh, not be getting power to either your circulator or over to your temperature control here. And also your temperature control could go bad. So, you know, it may be off by say 10 degrees or 20 degrees or something like that. You might have to compensate for it or you may just need to go ahead and replace it. If you want to help support this HVACR training channel, check out patreon.com slash acservicetech where we're rewarding the members there by adding extra content such as articles, videos, and answering questions. And if you're looking for the tools used in this video such as the alligator clips or the DL479 or DL469 multimeter, I have them linked down in the description below. Hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech channel.